Hi. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Hashtag Echoes of Enlightenment, Baroque Literature at Berg Mountain University's Optional School. Come along with us concerning our 11th literary figure and a study with Adam Smith. 11th literary figure. From, Kirkcaldy and Fife. Scotland. A study with Adam Smith. June 16, 1723 to July 17, 1790. Suspending the Habeas Corpus Act of 1679 and 1715 meant few opposed to those in power could submit to not being able to believe what they willed whereas so presented with fight or flight, a Jacobite army rose. Whether fortunate or not English preferred as had Indians the English Empire, those Latin to return to Rome. Scots were either Catholic as Queen Mary, Presbyterian, or Episcopal where to them Anglicanism directed Saxons as had Latin those Roman against Scottish hegemony. After the second unsuccessful Jacobite rising in 1719 Tories, realizing physics may not have been in their favor, concocted the Atterbury plot in March of 1721 which would have restored the House of Stuart in James, Duke of York and antagonist of the Glorious Revolution to power. With Robert Walpole of the Whig Party elected as Prime Minister in April of 1721, he and the German House of Hanover had to defend themselves from Tory loyalists who couldn't believe themselves physically and politically subdued. The Transportation Act of 1717 allowed an only alternative to the death penalty as relocation to American colonies. The three Anglo-Dutch wars would see European naval warfare over mercantilism as supremacy in the New World began on water. In the Cavalier Parliament which lasted 17.75 years from 1661 political strategy of the revolution was strengthened by the Clarendon Code opposing Catholicism. The Corporation of 1661, Uniformity of 1662, Conventicle of 1664 and 1665 Five Mile Acts ensuring Anglican hegemony over Latin and British government. The later Test Acts of 1673, 75, and 78 dissolved the cabal and ran Catholics from government, save James family. By 1723 the Jacobite risings of 1715 and 1719 ended with Whigs victorious in a Tory retreat to the Highlands. A fatherless child, Adam Smith had a healthy education from which Baroque literature distinguishing him, he'd tutor Buckleoka as young Duke, Henry Scott throughout Europe sharing Scottish enlightenment. Adam Smith was born at Kirkcaldy in Fife, Scotland in 1723 the same year but after Christopher Lair was executed and Henry St. John was pardoned for there being Jacobite plotters. His father wouldn't see his birth where it's said he died, but he was more than likely a Jacobite who took to the hills to avoid the part he played in the Risings. Margaret Douglas's so-called widow, the late senior Adam Smith who writer to the Scottish Signet, Judge Advocate and Kirkcaldy's Customs Controller was more probably a Tory. Be that as it may, the senior Smith probably either actually died two months before his son's birth naturally, was killed by forces hostile to Jacobite sympathizers, relocated to the Highlands or was arrested being shipped off to the American colonies with no habeas corpus. With baptism definite and his birth supposed, most refer to his baptism as it could be from two minutes to two, but we can't say he was alive when he wasn't. So, it is just safest to accept clerical documentation weeks the junior had a healthy education beginning briefly with the Romani at age 3 and afterwards studying history, mathematics, Latin, and writing at Kirkcaldy's Berg School. His formal education began at 14 as entry to the University of Glasgow would render him under the custody of Hutchison where he studied moral philosophy. At 18 in 1940 he'd matriculate to Balliol College for postgraduate work in Oxford but left before the end of his scholarship in 1746 perhaps sympathetic to Hutchison's death. Encouraged by Lord Kames, Henry Holm, and initially focusing on topics concerning rhetoric and Bell's lettre he'd lecture publicly at the University of Edinburgh, later covering opulence and natural liberty. In 1751 he was awarded a professorship <laughs> teaching moral philosophy and logic Most courses in Glasgow, in tutoring later in life to those more regal ushered his traveling around Western Europe where other intellects of the day couldn't help but remember his affect on them in the interest of the future, today, right now, back then. Protecting national markets and their merchants was a common policy that now called cronyism is more formally mercantilism as the foundations of classic economic theory of a free market were laid by Smith. As Baroque literature distinguished Smith with and from other men contemporary he stands unique as a Scottish Enlightenment thinker most in American economics. His The Theory of Moral Sentiments copyright 1759 linked aesthetics and morality and preceded an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations copyright 1776 that left him known as the father of economics. Seeing mutual sympathy framing our sentiments on morality and professing rhetoric and Bell's lecture the measure of Baroque literature is hidden in the joy in repetition of rhetoric and the beauty of self-expression in the harmony of one's native tongue. We choose what rhymes more so than not, while the art in combining words so that concepts may be understood with greater mutual sympathy for what's been said and what's now referred to as empathy. With the convention parliament a new instrument of transition under William and Mary to where the art of the British statesman, orator, and pontiff would prolong English, Scottish and Irish legacy. Reference to Scotland as Alba or Albany informs others' allegiance is to what those Gaelic called Scotland before its Latinization. 
In Smith's The Wealth of Nations he argues that closeness to our Lord is not necessarily a reflection of economic stature where political, social, technological, natural, and other factors play into economics and Americans mostly drug through the mud for lack of having a personal haberdasher forcefully herded to the new world. He'd resigned from the University of Edinburgh in 1764 to tutor Buckleuca as young Duke, Henry Scott in Europe and share Scottish enlightenment with other minds enlightened with their own respective reasonings. Why? Well, because either one or two. One, the tyranny of a majority party in movement chose political separation from England, Scotland, and Ireland, Ireland and England or just Scotland or. Two, we are just practicing tanny strevi in the real world today amongst citizens instead of members of a much smaller clan where presbyters author sovereignty. If Latin is to Roman what Anglo is to Saxon, the expansion of the Roman empires preferring Latin to Greek, as if history is only what's Roman, Saxon had Anglican and English those Scottish. With fewer written records prior to Rome's system of taxonomy, how else would we tell time, how long we have been here or differentiate between the catacombs of time and space without Christ? Rulers just ensure reigns subjects identify with can so with them and taxes are paid, when levied. The first exclusion parliament known as the habeas corpus parliament in March of 1679 wherein only option for one guilty of treason than death was relocation in the American colonies, so haberdashery became necessary as public standards rose. Many more accepted the alternative to death as caught in legal systems presumption by six meant condemnation and the theory of moral sentiments cast from crowded high society England some found home in the wilderness while others had society. Adam Smith, with an uncertain birth date was baptized 300 years ago on this past June 16th of 1723, which was a Wednesday, if I can recall. Though raised a fatherless child, Smith wasn't a bastard as his father of the same name, Scottish writer to the signet, controller judge advocate, wouldn't see another sunset of his widowed wife's pregnancy. Smith, a fatherless child, from age 6 until 14 in 1737, studied at Kirkcaldysburg School and matriculating to the University of Glasgow he would later finally to Balliol College in Oxford. Known for amongst other things was his authorship of the Treaty of Moral Sentiments and the Wealth of Nations wherein them driving motivation in American economics finds its foundation. Morality for Smith was the affect of aesthetics wherein ethical sentiment determines not only what's good but also what's right. Wealth for Smith is not a matter of divine intervention, but instead of God's will, it's owed to factors and interactions between political, natural, economic, social, and technological advantages to which theories buttressed by others are guaranteed and absolute, but mostly the willpower to work. Leaving the University of Edinburgh, he'd tutor Henry Scott the then Duke in European affairs abroad interacting with other Enlightenment thinkers of the times. That's all the information we have for you this session. We hope the most was gotten out of it. Next time we analyze Mary Wollstonecraft who was distinguished by other Enlightenment thinkers as an Enlightenment thinker not because she was a smart woman but an equally competent person and philosopher. Thank you for your time and consideration.